Hi there, Heather Liu of Closet Core Patterns coming to you with lesson two of the Joe Dress and Jumpsuit Sew Along video series. In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to fully assemble the bodice. So how to sew this beautiful v-neck bodice and how to uh, uh, assemble our slot seams and finish everything with bias tape. Um, it's a really interesting process. I think you're going to get a lot out of it and I'm excited to teach you how to do it. If you're enjoying the video in the series, uh, feel free to like the video and uh, subscribe to our channel and hopefully we'll be doing more uh, sew alongs in the future. So let's get into sewing that bodice. All right, to get started constructing your Joe jumpsuit, we're gonna want to apply the interfacing along all of the places indicated in the kind of interfacing guide and in the instructions. So uh, primarily that is uh, center back. So here we're doing it to interface and stabilize where the zipper goes. So there's a pattern piece for this you'll wanna use. And then we also wanna stabilize the neckline. And in the instructions, we give you some um, options for doing that different ways you can finish it. Personally, I want to use this knit stay tape instead of stay stitching. And so just so we can visualize our seam allowance, I'm just going to mark it in. Our seam allowance is about a half of an inch and you want the stay tape to just cover, like just, just cover that seam allowance. You don't want it coming all the way over here. You just want it to cover where your stitch line is going to be because you will end up seeing a little faint edge of this. And so the less that we see of it, the better. Um, and if you don't have knit stay tape, you could just use a strip of interfacing here. And what I should do to protect my iron is actually use a little pressing cloth when I'm applying my interfacing. This is just a piece of silk organza. It's quite dirty. <laughs> um, I've been using it for a long time, but uh, silk organza makes a great pressing cloth that protects your iron. So now this side's interfaced and I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna, this is the back piece. I'm going to go ahead and interface the back neckline and the center back of the other piece. Okay, so I've just gone and interfaced the neckline of the back piece and the center back. And we also want to interface this sleeve hem. You don't have to, it's kind of optional, but um, this is cut on the bias. And so if you just want to have a nice experience pressing this, it does help to kind of stabilize it with a little bit of stay tape or interfacing. And again, we have a pattern piece for this. So if you don't, you don't need to eyeball this, I'm just doing it with a little bit of that stay tape we talked about. And I'll do that for both hems. Okay, so I'm just coming to the front piece and I just wanted to kind of show you this a little bit. So again, I'm using that stay tape and I just want it right on the edge of the half inch seam allowance because you will end up seeing once the seam is finished and pressed, a very small edge of it. So I'm just trying to keep it really like just on top of the seam line with my stay tape. Alternatively, you can stay stitch. So if you want to stabilize the seam with some stay stitching, go for it. I just prefer interfacing because it adds more stability. Okay, so now the front is fully interfaced. I've also interfaced the uh, sleeve hems and the back is totally done. And now it's just time to interface the center back of either your dress or your pants. So here is the skirt and there's a little notch I don't know if you can see on camera. There's a little notch here. You're basically just going to interface to that notch. So I'm just using a strip of interfacing and I'm going to interface basically to the notch. And you're going to repeat this and do it for the pants. Whether you're doing the skirt or the pants, it's the same thing. You're just going to interface the center back seam approximately to the notch. Alrighty, so the next step is to get our inserts ready. For the sleeves, we're gonna have two, and there are different pattern pieces depending on whether or not you're doing the big sleeve or the small sleeve, because if it's a bigger sleeve, it's a bigger curve. And then we also have one for center front. Um, this fabric doesn't really have a visible right side, right, wrong side, so it doesn't really matter. But if you have a visible right side, you wanna press the seam, as we're about to do it right now, towards the right side and it'll be clear in a moment when we go and start sewing all this together why that, that's the case. So this is the right side, you're pressing it this way and you're just pressing it in a quarter of an inch. Obviously, if you wanna use a seam gauge, go ahead. And for the sleeve inserts, you're gonna do this on both sides. 
I think there might be a little notch there too to help you press it in. And then for the center front insert, we're only gonna do it one time, okay? So you're only gonna do this on one side, not both. And now we're gonna go to the machine and just really close to the raw edge of this, I'm just gonna sew a straight stitch all the way across on all of these to anchor this folded seam allowance in place. One thing that I forgot before we go and uh, sew in the inserts is to just sew the darts. And so there's uh, a dart on the front and back. So there's gonna be four darts that you need to sew. And it's an open dart. Sometimes they're closed. This one is actually cut open. And there's little notches to help you along that seam line. And this is seam allowance is about three eighths. And we're just gonna pin right up to the dart point, which I've got marked here with a yellow dot. I like to put a pin right kind of after it so I know where to taper off my stitching. And we'll do this for all of the darts and then we'll go to the machine and sew them. Okay, so we're just gonna sew these darts at the machine. The seam allowance for them is three eighths of an inch. And my foot is three eighths of an inch, so it's very easy to sew the seam allowance because I just need to line it up with the side of my foot. And I'm basically gonna sew this like a seam allowance, kind of following that seam. And then as I approach the folded area, I wanna kind of gently taper off my stitches so I have a nice gentle dart. And the secret to keeping your darts from unraveling is you pull the threads like this, and then you just manually tie the dart point and then trim it. And then that way the dart point gets finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all four of the darts on the front and back. Okay, so the darts are now all sewn on all four of these. I'm gonna go and finish this seam here at the serger. I don't have the GoPro on the serger, so I can't show you that, but if you don't have a serger to finish this, you can also uh, zigzag it, or if you wanted, you could finish it with a, a little bit of bias, um, maybe a Hong Kong seam, uh, but you couldn't use your half inch bias here to finish this because this is only three eighths of an inch. So finish those seams and then we'll go back to the pressing station and talk about pressing these darts. Okay, so I clearly have not had enough coffee today because I forgot about the darts at the waist. So on the front waist, we have two darts on each side as well. Um, and we've marked them, I always mark the, the beginning of the dart point with a notch and then we mark the point with the yellow dot. So you're just gonna do the same thing that we did with the the underarm darts that we just sewed. We're gonna do the same thing, pin through, pin th right through the top. I'll pin the second one as well. I'll do this on the other side and then we'll go back to the machine and sew these darts. And then <laughs> we can come and press all of these in place. So here I am at my machine. I'm just gonna line up where that dart starts. I'm gonna backstitch at the end. Um, you can't see, I just shifted the camera so I have a little bit more room here, but you won't be able to see me hitting that button. So when the when I've reversed, you can see this light come on. So if you see that light come on, you know that I've just backstitched or I'm going backwards, okay? All right, and now we're gonna sew a nice angled smooth line from here all the way to here, kind of tapering off at the end so we don't have a weird pucker here. And then just like I did with the other darts, I'm gonna pull the thread tail tie a little knot here and that that will stabilize my dart and now I'm going to go and do that for the second dart at the waist on this side and then I'll repeat it for the other side okay so we've sewn all of the darts on the bodice and now we just need to press these so the waist darts get pressed towards center front okay so that's towards like this angled seam and it's really helpful to do this over a ham okay because you can get a nice smooth um kind of shape that we, you create over that curve. And then this seam, the one, the underarm seam, gets pressed towards the sleeve hem, so it's gonna get pressed that way. I'll repeat that for the other front. And then for the back, there's just the one dart that needs to get pressed. It's that underarm dart. And once again, that's getting pressed towards the sleeve hem. And again, to get a nice smooth join here, doing it over the tailor's hem, this just gives you a nice much better press. So repeat that for both sides, all of the darts. 
Next, we are going to, before we can get those inserts in, we need to press the sleeve hems up. So this is one of those parts in the pattern, uh, st stages I should say in this pattern, where there's a few parts where you're gonna get things ready to finish sewing them later on. So right now we're gonna press the hem up, but we're not actually gonna sew the hem. You'll see why as we start assembling why this is the case, but you just wanna get it pressed up so you know where the hem is and then it gets stitched later. So the first time is a quarter of an inch and then the second time we're gonna press it is a half of an inch. I'm using a seam gauge here, you can use a ruler. You just wanna use something that's gonna help you get a nice consistent line. It's really important that you're accurate here. The final seam line of the sleeve needs to match the insert. So you wanna to try to be as accurate as you can here, sewing a half inch, so I'm just gonna measure that. And because it's a bit curved, you might just have to shift it a little bit. And again, you're going to go and repeat for both sleeve hems. So you're going to see because this is curved, it's not lying perfectly flat. It will once everything gets sewn together, but repeat this for all four sleeve hems. Okay. So we've gone ahead and we've sewn those darts. So we've got the underarm dart, the bust darts sewn. We've pressed up our hem seam allowance, and now it's time to attach the sleeve insert. You just have to kind of pay attention here because it's a little bit unusual. Um, so when in doubt, you can always read the instructions. But what we want to do with to attach the sleeve insert, we're actually going to sew wrong side of insert to wrong side of uh, bodice. This fabric doesn't really have a wrong right side, wrong side, so it doesn't matter. But basically, the edge where you've pressed up the seam allowance and you stitched it, that raw edge of the seam should be facing up right now. And if you're confused about what sleeve insert goes where, we do have uh, notches to help, you know, help you get yourself oriented. And to start, we have a notch, I've tried to kind of clip it here too. We have a notch at the top of the neckline seam right here. That marks where the folded edge of the seam sleeve insert matches up, okay? So I'm just matching up the folded edge of the insert with that notch. And then the bottom folded edge is gonna match up with the folded hem. So we're gonna include the folded up hem in this pin. And now you're uh, pinning a straight seam to a curved one. So you might have to kind of do a little bit of this, getting everything lined up, but it should line up. If it doesn't, you might've had a cutting error or something. Um, and you're just gonna go and pin all of this in place before we go and sew it at the machine. And then you're gonna repeat that for the other sleeve. So we're gonna do the same thing, wrong sides together, pinning in place before we go and sew everything together. Okay, so here we are at the machine. I'm going to sew the insert to the bodice. And I've gone ahead and I've changed my stitch length to a basing stitch. So it's long basing stitch point, uh, I think at five millimeters. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is just we're just getting this in place. We're going to go and sew um, bias tape to this and it's going to be finally stitched. So we're just using a basting stitch to kind of like temporarily tack these pieces together. And I'm sewing this seam allowance at three eighths. Again, when we go put the bias tape on, the seam allowance will be a half inch, but we don't want to see this basting stitch. We want to hide it. And so we do it at three eighths of an inch so that it doesn't, it gets hidden in the next pass of stitching. Okay. So I'm just going to go and stitch this together using a long basting stitch at three eighths. And then just make sure as you're approaching the notch that you kind of keep everything aligned, that the folded edge of this piece lines up with the notch. And so here's my notch here, here's where my piece ends, and we'll go and do the other side now. Okay, so we've gone and we've sewn that insert to the front bodice, and it's gonna look something like this. And you're at this point being like, Heather, what the heck is happening? I don't understand. Trust me, it's all gonna come together. So I'm gonna find the corresponding back. So this is the right side of the dress. Um, and it's the right side because if I was wearing it, this would be my right arm. So whenever we refer in the pattern instructions to right side or left side, it's as you were wearing it, not like looking down on it. So now I'm going to go and do the exact same thing that I did 
on this side. I'm going to sew the right side of the insert to the wrong side of the back bodice. And I'm going to line things up just like I did before, lining up those folded edges at the hem, lining up the folded edge at the top with the notch, matching my notch on the back, and then pinning everything into place. And then once again, we're going to go to the machine and we're going to use that long basting stitch and sew this at three eighths of an inch. And when it's all said and done, we'll have the front attached to the back by this insert in the middle. All right, so we've gone and we've attached that insert. Just a reminder, this is kind of what it looks like right now. And essentially what we've done is almost like added a, a third dimension, right? This is now has this kind of shape and structure that it wouldn't had we just sewn these two seams together. Right? It's like we're really adding a little bit of width through here. But of course now the seam needs to get finished. And we're going to start by finishing the back first. This is the, the back seam is where we're going to apply our bias tape. We're going to start at the hem. We're going to go all the way across the sleeve and across the neckline. I've already gone and pre-cut uh, a piece of bias tape that's the length of that seam with a little bit on the end. Just a little bit of excess. And the important thing to know when you're working with bias tape is, especially if it's commercially made, generally one side is wider than the other. So you can see this bottom layer is a little bit wider than the top. I'm just going to measure this so you can see. So the top layer is a half inch wide and the bottom layer is just a little bit wider. And why they do this is if you were to go and apply this to a seam, like let's say quilts, because generally half inch bias is, is used for quilts, and you were to insert your quilt in between and you go to bind this, when you go to do your top stitching here, because the under layer is a little bit wider, you're more likely to catch the under layer with your stitching. So it's just something that's going to help with sewing accuracy. So if your bias tape happens to be a little bit wider, when you open it up and attach it, to your garment. You want to make sure that the narrower side is the one that's getting attached. And the reason that is, is let's just pin this in place so you can kind of visualize. So when we wrap this bias tape around, the longer side is now underneath. And when this gets pressed into place and stitched here, especially along the neckline, when it gets wrapped around the neckline, we know that we're going to catch the bottom layer with our stitching. So if you do have a shorter side, make sure it's the one that's getting pinned. Um, if you've made your own bias tape, chances are it's going to be equal on either end. It's going to be the same width, so you don't really need to worry about what side goes where. So what we're going to do is we're going to open that bias tape up and we are going to pin it all along the seam. And as you're pinning it into place, try not to stretch it out, okay? Because the bias, this is cut on the bias, so it's got a little bit of stretch naturally in it, but you don't want to stretch out your tape while you're going. So we're just pinning it into place, kind of trying to keep it as um, non-stretched as possible. Okay, so now as we're approaching this joint, okay, so this is the joint where the sleeve seam basically ends here and then it turns into neckline. You can see what it looks like on the other side. You just want to make sure, first of all, that you've things are sewn properly here and that you're really kind of concealing and covering all of this with your bias tape. And you're going to basically kind of change angles a little bit because there is a little bit of an angle change. So we're going to turn the bias tape here and then we're going to proceed all the way across the neckline. And of course, as we're going across the neckline, I'll just pin this in place and show you. There's on, you know, as when we get to the neckline, the only thing that you're pinning is the bodice neckline, whereas here, we're so we're we're pinning the um, the insert and the bodice. So now what we're going to do this is what it looks like when it's flat. We're going to go to our sewing machine, and now we're going to sew this entire seam, but we're going to sew it at a half inch. So that first stitch line we did a basting stitch at three eighths. Now we're going to sew a proper half inch. We're going to sew this entire thing, and we're also going to do the opposite side. Okay. So let's go over to the machine and sh see what that looks like. All right, here we are at the machine. We're about to sew the bias tape to the sleeve. So I'm just going to reiterate how important it is that we sew this seam allowance right now at a half inch. So with bias tape 
in order for this to all kind of neatly wrap around each other, like we already measured, the fold here is a half inch, but if you measure the second fold here, it's just slightly less than a half inch. And why they do that is if you sew it here, let's say we're gonna just line up the edge of the bias tape at the edge of the, the fabric, gonna pin it, let's just pretend this is our stitch seam, and then we wrap it around. It's basically perfect, right? You get a perfect fold. But the problem is that it's not, the seam allowance is not a perfect half inch, right? It's like a scant half of an inch. And then you're wrapping this around and you're top stitching it in place. And while it looks like on the outside with the turn of the cloth and everything, that this is a half of an inch, the seam allowance where you actually sewed it is a scant half of an inch. Why am I being so specific? Well, when all of this gets pressed to the inside of the garment, right? When we wrap this by a seam around and we turn it to the inside, you're gonna end up having a weird gap. It's really important that these seams, when they get wrapped and they meet, that they meet exactly in the middle. So it's really, really crucial when you're sewing this bias tape that you sew it at a half of an inch. So what that means is that you're gonna probably end up having to shift the bias tape over slightly to account for that kind of difference in width. And I'm just gonna get this started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the edge of the bodice, the, un the underside, like the actual um, bodice itself, not the bias tape, with my half inch mark on my needle plate, okay? And I'm starting at the hem right now. And so I'm just gonna backstitch at the beginning. And if I start sewing and I'm lining up at a half inch here, I can see if I push this bias over so it aligns with the edge of the bodice and sew at a half inch, I'm gonna end up sewing not like next to the crease instead of directly on it. So basically, long story short, just shift the bias over. Again, if you made your own bias tape, maybe this isn't a problem. Keep your fabric aligned with a half inch, sew down the middle of the crease, and you're gonna end up having a little bit of a gap here. And it can be hard to stay on track if you're looking at a little needle guide. So if you have a piece of masking tape, you might wanna mark it. You might wanna have a little stack of post-its that you stick here as a guide. I have this little plastic guide that I'm gonna line at a half inch and it's just gonna be, it's gonna stick here and it's gonna help me really keep the edge of the fabric aligned at a half inch. But this also works with a, you know, a couple post-its there that you can rest the edge of the fabric against. Once again, resting it against this and sewing down the center of the crease so there's a little bit of a gap here. And I'm about to approach the joint where the um, insert ends. So I just wanna make sure I'm staying nice and flat and that I'm really doing a good job of kind of following the curve there with the bias tape while also keeping that gap. So this can just be a little bit tricky. So just slow, just go nice and slow. and then all the way to the end. However, a couple inches away from center back, you wanna to switch to a basting stitch. And that's because we're just, we have to install the zipper later. And it's easier to install the zipper if all of this isn't like finally constructed, you're gonna end up having to rip out some stitches. So since you're gonna to have to do that, let's just baste it in place so it's tacked in and then we can easily remove it without a problem. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've attached that bias tape all the way along the seam, all the way along the neckline, and then all the way back. Now, what's going to happen is if I, once I go and try to wrap this bias tape around, if it might just, it's just this is the nature of sewing. You can't be super, super precise. Wherever you weren't like exact, you might find that the bias tape doesn't fold neatly, that it doesn't fold neatly around. And if that's the case, you just might have to go in here and end up trimming slightly down. So I'm just gonna wrap this around and see if I'm getting a nice smooth wrap. Yeah, it seems like it's wrapping because basically what you want is this raw edge to touch that fold. And if this raw edge is a little bit longer than where that fold is, you're not gonna get that nice smooth join, but actually it's looking pretty good. Just here, I can feel it. It's maybe a little bit wider here. So I'm just gonna trim. Let's 
see if I can get that to lie flat. Yeah, great. There's just a little bit here I might trim down. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so now what we want to do is get our tailor's ham out. Is we want to just press this now. We want to wrap the bias around and we want to press it towards the center of the insert. And you might be tempted to go and stitch anything right now. We're not stitching. All we're doing is pressing. And it's just really important that you maintain that fold. So just make sure that you're pressing and keeping that fold where it needs to be. Okay, and as I'm approaching, again, we have that joint where it basically stops being sleeve and starts being neckline. So this is a join where you just want to take your time and just really make sure everything's nicely pressed and nicely even. All the way to the back of the neckline. So now that that's done, we're going to go and repeat that for the other side, making sure that this bias tape wraps all the way around very nicely. And then it's going to be time to actually join these two together along the center front, along that V neckline. We're going to do another uh, one of our little insertion moves, and then we're going to finish uh, attaching the bias tape. So go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to, in the next step, show you how to insert the um, insert here for the front bodice. Okay, so now is time to attach the center insert. So we're going to do basically exactly what we did on the sleeve. It's the same concept, but we're going to do it to the center front seam instead. And so same thing, we're going to line up wrong sides. So the wrong side of the insert is going to touch the wrong side of the dress. And in this case, you're just going to line up the raw edge of the insert with the waist edge and then the folded edge is going to line up right around the v-neck right there and remember we've folded up that little seam allowance there's a stitch line here so that's how this works and then we're going to go and do the same thing on the other bodice wrong sides together so this is going to get pinned to the other side of the bodice. Actually, let me go and sew this one first and then I'll sew the second one. So same thing, we're going to switch to a basting stitch. So we're going to go down to long basting stitch. And we're sewing this once again at 3 8 before we attach our bias, okay? Okay, so now the insert is attached. And at this stage, I could go and attach the other side. Okay, that's how we call for it in the instructions. But actually, I've already, I'm here just to, so I don't have this huge thing flip flopping all over the place. I'm actually gonna go and attach my bias tape first to this seam. So we're gonna do exactly what we did in the back all the way here. So we're gonna go all the way along the sleeve, down the V-neck, down the center front of the dress. We're going to press it to the center and then we are going to attach the opposite side of the dress and do the same there. I'm just putting the bias tape on here because it is a bit easier to do it when they're not all attached. And just like I did before, I'm going to find the short end of my bias tape. I'm going to open it up and then that's the side I'm going to align with the seam here. And I'm going to leave a little bit extra. And once again, without stretching the tape, I'm just going to go all the way down, pinning it along the seam. Okay, so here we are. We're getting to that little juncture again. I'm going to just try to kind of wrap the tape around the corner where the neckline meets the sleeve. A little tricky. You're just kind of pinning it right now. You don't have to be super precise, not until you get to the machine. Okay, all the way down the v-neck line. And then again, we have a bit of a join here, like a bit of a 
it goes from an angle to a straight seam. So I'm just going to try to follow that with the pins. And then all the way down to the bottom. And I cut this extra long so I have a little bit of excess here. And now we're going to go back to the machine. And now sew this bias in place. So just like before, I'm going to use my little seam gauge. Again, you can use a stack of post-its or you can just eyeball it, but it does help keep things nice and even. And I'm just going to get my stitch down to 2.5. So sewing at a half inch and also trying to sew down the center of the bias tape. Okay, and so I'm approaching that weird little corner, so we're going to just slow down a bit. I'm going to get up to it, but basically we have to almost turn a corner here, so I'm just going to try to be, slow it down. I'm trying to be as accurate as I can. And now I can speed up again because I'm on a straight path, straight run. Again, I'm about to turn that corner. So I'm kind of just leaving my needle down. I might even raise my presser foot and kind of turn as I get here. And then another straight pass all the way down. Let's take a look at this and help orient you and so you can understand what's happening. This is the back. Here's the waist seam, center back, neckline, back, uh, arm seam. We've already pressed that. Turn it over. Front sleeve, waist, V neckline, center front. So just like we did on the back side, we're going to wrap this bias tape around the seam and see if we can get it to cleanly wrap around and if we can't like right here we're just going to go and trim the seam underneath so that it lays flat like here it's laying flat here the seam below is a little too wide so it needs to get trimmed and now i'm just going to test all the way around it's looking good okay so i'm going to just start pressing just like we did on the back seam wrapping it around and pressing it and part of the the reason that you're doing this right now it's just like a double check to make sure everything's clean and matching evenly Around this little corner seam, again, you're turning a corner. So just keep that in mind. That's like an actual corner that you're trying to wrap this around. And if it looks a bit janky, it's like everything looks better when you put steam on it. So just hit it with some steam and it'll smooth out. And then we want to press everything towards the center of the insert. So now that we're getting at this stage, this is exciting because now we're seeing how it's all going to fall together. So lay wrap that seam around it lay it flat press it and what should happen is when you do the same on the other side they should meet right in the middle you want these two seams right here to butt up against each other so at this stage if that's not happening like if you maybe weren't as accurate as you should have been or could have been and maybe one is really overlapping the other if one's really overlapping each other and you don't have enough room, I really would recommend just going and seam ripping that little section out and adjusting your stitch line so that it meets perfectly. I mean, this is pretty good. It's meeting perfectly in the center. Now, if it's you have the opposite problem and maybe you have like a gap, we did draft this piece to just, I think it's like an inch, instead of it being a perfect inch wide, I think it's like an inch and a sixteenth wide just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room but if you find that you have space in between you don't need to rip anything out you really can just shift your seam over and when we top stitch everything you're not going to really notice but it's more of an issue if things are overlapping so this is really your opportunity to check your work make sure everything is lining up so i'm just going to go and continue pressing this and while i'm here i'm also pressing the other side almost pressing them together make sure everything lines up 
And this is going to look absolutely beautiful once everything's done. I know this seems like a whole lot of work for a sleeve seam, but it's these kind of really beautiful details that make things feel special and almost couture. This is, you know, a couture level detail. And you're going to feel it while you're wearing it. It's, you know, you really can't um, achieve the silhouette and the shape and the volume of the sleeve without this kind of really stabilizing steam, seam finish. Okay, so we're approaching the end and I should have mentioned, I should have been using my clapper, trying to do too many things at once. Um, if, especially if you're working with a fabric, if it's maybe not pressing well, or, you know, some fabrics just don't respond to heat. A this is where the clapper comes in. So just to help these seams lay really flat and smooth, I'm just going to give this a shot with the steam. And then you come in with the clapper and you just hold it for a few seconds over the seam and it really helps to anchor that seam in place. Okay, so we're almost done pressing. The last step is we're just going to trim this down just a little bit. And what we want to do is wrap that raw edge under so that the folded edge of the bias lines up with the folded edge of the insert. Just like that. I'm going to pin it into place. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. And now we have like a really cute, clean, completely clean. Look at how beautiful that finish is on the inside. Finish. So now this, this piece is kind of ready to go, but I still need to attach the opposite side. So I'm going to go and do that right now. Once again, I'm just lining up the bottom of that insert with the bottom of the waist seam. And I'm going to go and stitch the insert to the opposite side of the dress. So our bodice is going to look like this. And then we just need to go and attach this bias tape just like we did on this side to this side and we can top stitch it in place and we're almost done with the bodice. So what we're going to do now is top stitch, start top stitch, stitching this into place. And so we're going to do this in a couple steps. The first step is that we want to top stitch the center of the bias tape all along the sleeve, starting at the hem and ending at the shoulder. And we're going to top stitch the folded edge, this kind of loose baby right here, in place on the insert about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. We're going to do that on both sides. And we're going to stop stitching here, right here. And then we're going to do the next part. But let's just get there first. We'll go over to the machine and we'll do that. If you want to, you might want to go right now and just pin everything into place. If you want, you might just want to finger press it uh, as you're getting to the machine. Just make sure that those raw edges are pressed into place. Okay. So we are about to start sewing on the hem. I've got that bias tape folded under. And truly, the thing that's going to give you the best results right now is an edge stitch foot. So I already showed this to you. But it's got a little guide. And that guide is going to run right down the middle of this seam. And I'm going to shift my needle over to get really even consistent top stitching. So I'm going to show you, if you don't have one, get one. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll show you another way to do it if you don't have one, just in case. And I'm going to move the needle position over, let's see. In the instructions we say about an eighth, I kind of like the look of a sixteenth. It's a little bit narrower, but let's just see. I move my needle position over. I'm going to get this pin out of the way. Just make sure everything is really tucked under nice and neat. And I'm actually just going to push this guy right out of the way. Yeah, here we go. So I'm going to back stitch. Whoop. Got, I don't know if we got snarled there. Let's see. Am I okay? We're good. I'm going to back stitch. 
And now I'm going to start stitching. <laughs> I'm going to put my needle up actually and I'm going to get this guy lying flat again. I just wanted it out of the way when I started by stitching there. Okay. And here we go. So I'm just going to keep everything nice and flat. I'm going to make sure my seams are meeting right here in the middle. I'm going to line up with my guide with the center seam and I'm just going to go for it. Okay, so as I'm appro approaching that shoulder junction, you can see here it's kind of splitting. I want them to really meet here. I don't want to see any of the insert. So I'm going to use my fingers to really kind of try to keep everything flat. And then as I approach the end of the insert, I'm going to backstitch. See how that looks. So it looks pretty nice. So we have a nice even line of stitching. That edge stitch foot really did all of my work for me. And now I'm going to go and do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm going to move my needle the same distance, but in the opposite direction. On my faff machine here, Oh, is that as loud? Far? Okay, actually, yeah. On my faff, it's it's two. So if you have a faff, the dis the distance is two. It might be a little bit different on yours. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tuck this under. Now, you might have a little bit of a wedge here that's peeking out. So I'm just gonna clip. Right, we don't want to see this little corner here. I'm just gonna clip that. Probably should have done that on the other one. Everything is flat as I possibly can, as even as I possibly can. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get right under that edge stitch foot. I've got my needle over the same amount on the opposite side. And now I'm going to start stitching. I'm going to back stitch. And again, I'm not doing much. The guide is centered where I need it to be centered. The needle is where I need it to be. I don't need to do much, okay? The, the foot is really doing the work for me. All you really wanna do as you're sewing is just make sure everything is meeting evenly in the middle and using your fingers to kind of put the bias in place. Again, I'm approaching the shoulder joint. I don't wanna see this, or I would like to kind of avoid seeing it if I can. It's not the end of the world if you do. So I'm gonna just manipulate the fabric a little bit and try to stitch it in place so we don't see it. And then as I approach the end, I'm gonna back stitch. So it's looking pretty good. It's, I wanna go, right here you could see I have a little jiggy jag here, but I don't know if you were really fussy, you could go and rip that out, but nobody's looking that closely. What we're gonna do is we're going to go, one thing I'm observing is I think my stitch length is a little bit long. Um, I think it's two and a half. I might make it three. I think it would look prettier with a slightly longer stitch length. And we are going to add a little bar tack here for stability. But overall, you can see how smooth and consistent those lines are. But I, I do want to show you on the other side here. It's looking pretty good. Um, I want to show you on the other side how to do this without an edge stitch foot. And it's not going to be as even. But it's, you know, if you're in a pinch, you don't have one. I'll show you. Okay, so I've switched to a regular foot. I'm just going to clip again that little bit that's peeking out here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, if you can see this on my, here I'll show you, on my foot and probably on your foot, <laughs> uh, depending on what machine you have, you see that little red line? I'm going to use that as my guideline. So what I'm going to do is line up Actually, so they, I'm going to do it on this side. I'm going to line up the edge of the bias tape with that red line. I'm not going to move my needle position for this example. I'm going to use my machine foot as the guide. So I'm going to line up the edge of the, the tape with that red line on the right hand side. And then I'm just going to stitch right down the center and it'll give me about an eighth of an inch. And again, because you don't have like a physical guide helping you keep that in place, it's not going to give you, it's probably not going to be quite as accurate, but like I said, better than nothing and you know it depends on your machine I don't know what kind of feet you have so look for a foot that has like a little guideline and I'm just gonna make sure my needle is centered okay 
So lining up the folded edge of the bias with that red line. And here we go. And I do want to backstitch. So I'll backstitch there. And here we go. So once again, lining up the edge of the bias with that red line. And I'm going to stop here. And I'm just looking back and it looks pretty good. So this is another option. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew the other sleeve, again, just stopping at the shoulder sleeve, and then we'll finish top stitching the outside edge. Okay, so let's orient ourselves again before we move on to the next step. We have now top stitched our both rows of bias tape to the center of the insert. We've top stitched all the way along the sleeve, stopping at the shoulder joint. We did the same thing on the opposite side. And now I didn't, I just went and did this off camera, but I did the same thing to the center front seam. Okay, so I just went and just like we did on the sleeves, I met these in the middle, I used my edge stitch foot, and then I top stitched all the way down. Um, you can see on this side, it's a little bit uneven. And I think that's because I hadn't switched to the edge stitch foot. So I was having a hard time keeping a straight line. You can see when you use an edge stitch foot, you really get a much uh, straighter, smoother uh, stitch line. So now we're, on, we're getting there, we're getting there. We need to finish the top stitching of this bias because if we turn it around, yes, it's all anchored here and it's all anchored on the sleeve insert, but we still have it loose around the neckline. So it's loose here, it's loose on the back neckline. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go using our edge stitch foot or whatever method you were using before, we are gonna go and stitch on this side now. So we're gonna have corresponding line of stitching here, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. And then as we reach the neckline, we're gonna go all the way down, all the way down the neckline, all the way down to center front. And hopefully we will catch the underside of this bias tape with our stitching. If we don't, it's kind of a common thing that happens. You kind of miss it sometimes. If we don't, we're going to just slip stitch it in place. I'll cover that in a minute. And then we're going to do that on both sides. Okay. So we're going to do it all the way around here. And then if we turn it to the back on the opposite side, we're going to do the same thing all the way down. But I do want you to leave on the back neckline at center back. I want you to leave a couple inches free. So I want you to kind of stop top stitching maybe two, three inches away because again, we have to insert a zipper and we don't want all of this sewn because you're just going to end up having to rip it out. So let's go to the machine and finish this top stitching on both sides. All right, we're back on our sleeve hem. I've already got my edge stitch foot here. It's needle positions already moved over. Again, you can use that regular needle if that's regular um, foot, if that's all you have. And you just want to keep that guide pressed right up against the edge of the bias and then really let the guide do the work. Because this is round and curved, use your hands and smooth it out and kind of stretch the fabric out to keep everything nice and flat. Okay, so here we are. We're coming back around again. We want to try to catch this with our stitching. We want to try. I don't want you to lose sleep if you don't, because it is a little bit tricky. I don't even want to put too many pins in here because they get in the way. I'm just wrapping this on the wrong side and I'm trying to stay on that line and just trying to keep it wrapped around and hopefully we'll catch it with my stitch line. Oop, I got a little off there. I'm going to stop around here because of that zipper install that we're going to do in a moment. So let's see how I did. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So it looks good from this side. But I can see here I missed it, you know, on this side as I was sewing. And actually I can see it's, it's looking a little bit unsecure here. So you have two options. You can either slip stitch that closed or you can seam rip that. And because it's such an important, important juncture, I am considering seam ripping it and doing it over again, but we'll do that at a later step. Now I want to go and do the same thing 
on the opposite side of the seam. So now we're talking the center front. We're going to do the exact same thing all the way around. And once again, now we're approaching the V-neck and this is a little tricky joint. Just going to raise my presser foot. I'm going to see if I can kind of shift this over and see if I can catch it with my stitching. But it's hard because there's that little insert seam there kind of holding it. So let's just see if I catch it. And then as I'm sewing, I really just want to try to keep the under layer flat. So I'm trying to catch it with my stitching. And once again, I'm approaching that shoulder joint. So I'm going to use my fingers under here. I'm going to pull the underside of the bias in place and hopefully I'll catch it. Just go nice and slow. And then all the way down. Okay, so let's turn this around and see if I caught it. Ooh, I just missed it. So on this side, I, actually, this is the one I missed the first pass, but I caught it here. Fabulous. And then along the neckline, you can see I caught it here at the V neckline, but I just missed it here, right here. So I could go and rip this out, but this is really visible seam. And then you're going to have like a back stitch beginning and end. So I'm going to just slip stitch this in place on this side. That's fine, okay? I don't want you uh, ripping things out for the sake of perfection because you would end up having to rip out most of it so you don't see it. So now I'm going to go and do the opposite side, both sides of the seam, and then we're going to have all of these seams top stitched in place. Okay, so because I left that little gap open, I'm just going to do a little quick slip stitch on the wrong side, very carefully trying to make kind of invisible hand stitches here. So. You're not going to see it from the outside and you're not even going to really see it from the inside. So if you have any openings along that bias tape, you're going to do the same thing, a little slip stitch and seal that closed. And then you don't need to worry about going and ripping your top stitching out and redoing it at your machine. Okay, so let's get oriented right now. I'm going to show you, oh, sorry, no, all that bias tape sewn. We are just going to give this seam one final press. So I'm using my Taylor's ham lets me get that nice smooth curve and lots of steam with my um, iron and this is just going to finalize that seam. And I'm going to give that center front a press and then giving a press all along that neckline. This just helps kind of anchor your seams and it's a nice thing to do. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of a bar tack here on these seams where you have high stress. So along that shoulder joint there's a lot of pressure there and we're going to add a nice zigzag stitch that is going to help stabilize that and a bar tack is essentially just a zigzag stitch that's really close together and we're going to do it right here and it's going to help secure this area so when you're using your machine it might vary but you're going to want to really lower the length of that zigzag stitch as short as you can just above zero and then the width is kind of up to you i like a width of about three and then you go back and forth a few times, back stitch at the end, and then there's your bar tack. Let's take a look and see what this looks like. Oh, it looks pretty good. So that bar tack there is going to help stabilize that seam. And we're getting really close. So now we want to sew the side seams of our bodice. So we had pressed those seams. Um, along the hem up, uh, we had pressed the seam allowances in. So you're just going to open up that kind of hem that you'd pressed. You're going to match up your right uh, right sides together. You're going to match up your sleeve and we're going to sew that entire seam right now at the machine. So opening up that hem and then you're just going to sew this at 5 eighths all the way down the sleeve 
and then down the side of the bodice in one swoop. And then as I'm approaching that side seam, I just want to make sure that I'm making sure my seam allowances are folded in the right direction as I go to sew over it. And it's a bit of a curve here. There's like, it's actually, sorry, it's a bit of an angle, almost a right angle. So as you approach that seam, the seam on the dart, you want to kind of straighten out your fabric as I'm doing here and then turn that corner. and backstitch at the end. And now we're gonna go finish this. So if you have a serger, just go give that seam a serge. And that's what I've done here. You can actually see I've gone ahead and I've serged that. I trimmed it down to about 3 8 of an inch. And the last step here is really, um, and I'm just saying here that you wanna make sure that you're trimming, you know, about 3 8 of an inch away from that seam so that the that corner turns nicely. And now we're gonna just give it a press. So we're gonna press all of these seams towards center back. Again, using that tailor's hand makes it a bit easier. So now we're just, we're continuing to press the seam. And then of course, we've already pressed in that hem for the sleeve, but we wanna kind of just finish it up now. You started pressing it in and we're gonna finish pressing it before we stitch it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of retucking those little edges in. So I'm just making sure that my seam allowances are tucked under. I'm just gonna kind of re-establish that sleeve hem. And then on my tailor's hem, I'm just gonna give it another press. And then just to finish this off, we're gonna go to the machine. If you have a free arm on your machine, I suggest taking um, the bed off and liberating the free arm so that you can get it around that free arm. And now we're just going to um, hem this bodice. And I think I'm hemming it at about three eighths or half of an inch. And I'm just gonna go all the way around, all in the round, trying to be as consistent as possible and making sure that I'm catching the hem with my stitching. Now, as you can see, I'm approaching a quite thick area. So if you have a hump jumper, or even if you have a piece of cardboard Something um, that's just gonna help lift the foot up, that's what I'm carrying right now, that's a hump jumper. What you wanna do is lift the back of the foot up, put the hump jumper behind the foot so you're kind of raising it, and then that way it ensures that your needle doesn't get stuck on this level change. And this is a really handy trick for any anytime you're top stitching and it's really visible and you don't want your needle getting stuck, this is what you do. And then as you continue sewing, that thing, the hump jumper that was elevating the presser foot kind of just moves away and then you can continue sewing like normal. Okay, so guys, we're done our bodice. Congratulations, you did such a great job. Uh, it's looking beautiful. Our bias tape has been finished. It's just, it's encasing that neckline. It's wrapping all the way around. Of course, the center back seam hasn't been finished yet. We've got this gorgeous finish on the inside. It's just looking fabulous. Side seams are sewn. And so uh, we're really close. We're almost done the, the top of this and now we can get cracking on the bottom half. So that wraps up our lesson on sewing the Joe bodice. Whether or not you're making the jumpsuit or the dress will determine what video you're gonna be watching next. If you're making the jumpsuit, you're gonna to wanna to watch the video on sewing the pants. If you are making the dress, you're gonna to wanna to sew, watch the video on sewing the skirt. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next lesson.